So what is a UCC-1 and how does it work? A Uniform Commercial Code Form Number 1 is a form creditors use to secure their interest in property. In that sense, a UCC-1 form is to personal property what a mortgage or deed of trust is to real estate. So creditors use this form to secure collateral for loans, for example. Say John wants to open a gym and needs to borrow money for his gym equipment. The bank will generally record a UCC-1 and describe the gym equipment that secures the loan. If John does not pay back the loan, the bank can seize and sell the gym equipment to recoup the loan proceeds. Hi, I'm the Business Guy with Lawyers Limited, and the purpose of this video is to help you grasp the concept and see how easy it is to understand what the UCC-1 form does. I've been in the asset protection from lawsuits business since 1991 and bring you my personal experience. Our company started in 1906. We have a attorneys on staff, and employees nationwide. And if you're watching this on YouTube, can you please help me out by clicking the like button below so YouTube promotes this video? You can enter your comments, and you can also click the subscribe button below so that when more videos come out like this, you'll be up to date right away. So this is to give you a very easy to understand roadmap so that you can understand how secured creditors use the UCC-1 form. Plus, you'll really want to watch until the end because I will reveal a very special way to use the UCC-1 to protect your assets from lawsuits. Now, commercial transactions in the United States, such as contracts and loans, are governed by the Uniform Commercial Code known as the UCC. All 50 states have adopted a version of the UCC. Now, under the law, there are two types of property. Real property, which is real estate and things attached to it, and personal property, movable property, such as cars, computers, furniture, stock, jewelry, and intellectual property, such as patents and copyrights. So under the UCC, when a lender gives a loan and the lender uses personal property as the collateral for that loan instead of real estate, the lender must file a UCC-1 financing statement. Now, when one files this statement, it tells the public, as well as future lenders, that specific personal property has been pledged as security for an existing debt. So whoever properly files a UCC-1 for the specified property has priority over that property. That means if the borrower does not pay the loan as agreed, the lender can seize the property to recuperate some or all of its losses. Once a creditor files this form, the creditor establishes a relative priority with other creditors of the debtor. This process is also called perfecting the security interest in the property. The UCC-1 filing makes this type of loan a secured loan instead of an unsecured one. A UCC-1 financing statement may also be filed in the real estate records by an organization that leases fixtures so that they can establish the priority of the lessor's rights against the holder of a mortgage or other lien on the real property. The UCC-1 financing statement is the security instrument that ties the property on the left to the obligation on the right. So the creditor's rights against the debtor and the lessor's rights against the lessee are spelled out on the credit document, such as the promissory note or the lease agreement in the examples we're talking about here, and not the UCC-1 financing statement itself. So you make a promise to pay money on one hand, and then on the other hand, you pledge the property as security for that loan if you don't pay it back. Now, what many people don't know is that a filed financing statement typically has a duration of five years from when it was filed before it might lapse. Some exceptions are if it secures a manufactured home or public financing, it lapses is in 30 years from the date of the filing. There are also exceptions for mortgages and utility companies. Now, when it does lapse, the financing statement is no longer effective and any security interest that was perfected by the financing statement becomes unperfected. A secured party can continue their security interest for a further five-year period by filing a continuation six months before the expiration date of the financing statement. By the way, if somebody grants you a loan using a UCC-1 form to secure that loan, many times lenders do not automatically terminate the UCC-1. So as a borrower, it is important to ask the lender to terminate the UCC-1 after the loan has been satisfied. Once the process is complete, the state, or in some cases the county, returns a stamped copy of the filed UCC-1 form to the filer along with any other documents that may have been filed along with this document. I found that most experienced experts also recommend filing the obligation document, such as the promissory note or lease, along with the UCC-1, but the filing process does not require it. 
Some people have the debtor electronically signed toward the bottom of the UCC1 form in the optional file or reference data section in order to make the form more of a contractual agreement between the parties and to avoid the requirement of an additional security agreement. Sometimes we use the UCC1 as an asset protection strategy. That is, we set up an LLC for our clients, preferably an international LLC. Then we record a UCC1 that is payable to that LLC. Then if needed, we have an international lender purchase the UCC1 and deposit the proceeds into an international account in our client's International Asset Protection Trust. We then, for a fee, can assign that UCC1 to a new lender. Now, that is not money that our client can run away and spend, as that would be too risky for the lender, but it does show the judge that the personal property is secured by a UCC1 financing statement payable to a true third-party lender and the client's international LLC receive the proceeds. When the client is in the clear, the lender can turn terminate the UCC-1 along with the proceeds that the client received for selling the UCC-1. So they simply cancel each other out and the property is free and clear again. Now it's very interesting because when I did my first video on UCC-1s, I got comments below that I didn't even consider before and they mainly had to do with the straw man theory and their legal fiction. For example, one question is, do you have any videos on how to take full control over your legal fiction and access bond ties to birth certificates. Now, years ago, I had a pediatrician customer of mine, and he explained the thinking along these lines. He had paid an attorney tens of thousands of dollars to get billions of dollars he thought the government was hiding from all of us. So this group thought they could record UCC ones against the Capitol building and the White House and all kinds of government buildings and get money for themselves. So I kind of knew where the commenter was coming from. And here was my answer. I said, if this is relating to the straw man theory, I have studied actual case law. I have not seen such arguments survive the vast majority of actual court cases with real judges. Rather, I have observed such claims as more imaginary theories by fringe groups. The fringe groups tend to be devout followers and sincerely believe their theories. And I understand it. I don't want to pay my taxes, my debts, etc. So I'm going to create an imaginary person in my mind that is separate from me who really owes them. Now in the courtroom, this theory is held up for properly structured corporations. That is, the corporation is one legal person and the owner of that corporation is another legal person. But it does not hold up in the real world when a person imaginarily separates themselves from themselves. So I would rather adhere to what I've seen actually work in front of real judges and real attorneys on a large scale rather than theories that some small groups think should work. Now to the members of those groups, discussing this matter is almost like attacking their religion. They are often so emotionally tied to their theory that there's really no talking them out of it. In addition, there are those out there who believe that their social security number and or their birth certificates are worth millions or billions of dollars that they will get someday from the government. So I just want to say this. I'm not trying to stir up anything with these groups who have these beliefs. I was just replying to the question by using courtroom data in real life proven results that I've studied in the real world. But as I indicated in my answer, the true believers out there feel differently. So as expected, I got comments such as, don't worry, we're about to gain control of all our monies under our social security number. Our birth certificates are stock. Notice how he said, it is for your straw man account. He knows what's up, as if I was in on some government cover-up. <laughs> Another commenter said, I've typed my social security card number slash bank number into the Fed's database. It says there's an account. This guy doesn't want us to know. Another one who thought I was in on some government conspiracy because I made this video. I'm not. <laughs> Another commenter said, exactly. He don't want you guys to know. But I'm telling you now, we're all getting all that money behind our social security number. And finally, hey business guy, you say it's a theory because you made an oath to be on their side and you know the truth. You chose not to tell people because you work for the ones that's keeping us as slaves. Actually, ladies and gentlemen who have these beliefs, that's okay. More power to you. And I hope you're right. I hope the government does owe us billions of dollars. But I'm not really 
up on that end of things. I'm just talking about how to use UCC1s to secure property. So that's what the UCC1 form does. That's how it's used, and that's how we use it to protect our clients' assets. So if you have any questions about how to protect your assets from lawsuits, feel free to give us a call at 1-954-41050 or visit lawyerslimited.com and fill out a free consultation form. And please be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can be updated right away with the next video. This is the business guy.